certain you can come up with something, Jeff. Go on. Explain why Don't Look Up is bad. We're here. Wait. You're your support group. Cool. Now. Are you recording now? I am. Ah, uh, nice. So, <laughs> today, uh, Kara put on Don't Look Up because it did look interesting, admittedly, um, premise wise. And we watched it. And it's the worst film I've ever seen. And uh, Jeb has seen Lucy. <laughs> yes, I've seen many. I've seen Wonder Woman eighty four as well. But anyway, the premise is that a comet is headed for Earth, and two quote unquote low physicists find it, and they try to present their findings to the world, and they're just met with no one listening to the inevitability that the world gets destroyed, and it's an allegory for climate change. My first problem is, if you're doing an allegory for climate change, just a climate change story, but whatever. Yeah, I don't understand why you'd make <laughs> that allegory for climate change with a fucking meteor, but sure. I mean, so, it makes sense to me, because they're probably going to reach a wider audience. Like, if someone knows it's, like, blatantly anti- Well, but this like, film has, has been uh, marketed as, like, Completely oh, yeah. making fun. I of know, it. I know. So it's yeah. <laughs> counterintuitive. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, in principle. Right. But my problem is, if you told me this was an allegory of climate change, I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> I thought it was just an allegory for um, ignoring science in general, mm -hmm. which still executes the purpose, but it's not the specific one. Right. Um. But if you told me that a film that does this and it speaks about the social issues with corrupt politicians, corporations being heavily involved with democratic systems, using their power and wealth to get anything they want, whilst the media twists everything to go against science, that would legitimately be a very interesting film. Um, and I think it's uh, talking about very relevant issues today, especially with COVID uh, or climate change, yada, yada, yada. So what does this film do? It's like giving a ten-year-old. <laughs> so um, Adam McKay. Yeah, this idea, and somehow making it a weapon against the allegory. <laughs> the, That's the, interesting. <laughs> so as like, the reverse effect. Yeah, because the problem is, uh, it speaks about the severity of the situation, but every time it tries to do that, it kills all tension with, like, really awful jokes. Or uh, the jokes don't complement the social issues to talk about. So, like, if I were to use an example I always use is RTD.2, a lot of the jokes are in service to deliver the social message. So, like, the Savine are quite a funny monster. But their jokes are carried with the fact they're like politicians that are, don't care about principle or how they carry themselves. Here it's like, uh, there was a random fart joke for no reason. And it serves <laughs> nothing to do with the allegory or to continue the allegory. Well, I think uh, they're trying to say that farts are contaminating the environment. Of course. As you all know, <laughs> cow farts are what cause um, the climate change. So. And I kid yeah. you not. There is this moment where they meet this, I can't remember what Roy was, but he was a top government aide, and it's not Jonah Hill's character, but he's with them, and he's going, oh, you have to pay this much to get snacks of water, and it turns out it was free. <laughs> um, and they bring up this same joke five times. <laughs> hey, like Rick, random, repetition, dude. It's great. I love it. <laughs> in random moments, that there's no need for it. Like, the two characters are stargazing to try and see the comet. And it's like, this guy, like, scared me for snacks. I'm like, guys, the comet. <laughs> um, the, press, the press of characters, one of the worst characters in media I've ever gone to come across. Like, you thought the Kingsman 2, Trump allegory was bad. Mm -mm. To be mm -mm. fair, Kingsman 2 is the one that annoys me the most, but it's because I film is shit in other parts as well. This is going to annoy you more. I, I'm not joking. Like, so they go to the president because they've discovered the comet and uh, 
the head of planetary defense verifies what they found. Um, and they try to discuss the issue. And the president's like, what about my bid terms? Uh, how is this going to help my approval ratings? And I'm kind of like, one, you're not going to have bid terms. <laughs> <laughs> and, and two, I think saving the planet and being able to use that as a political weapon would probably make you one of the most powerful people I mean, yeah, in the world. Yeah, if we save the planet, everyone's going to love you. So, yeah. It, like, you could do no wrong, but no, apparently not. So she instead I mean, even chooses... Even Richard actually kind of got that right, because um, the Trump <laughs> allegory they had was that uh, the president, uh, he wanted to let Poppy's plan go through, where she, everyone who had used any kind of uh, illegal narcotics, they would die uh, in the span of 12 hours. So he was just putting them all in cages. But like in um, in public, he was uh, saying that he was actually negotiating with Poppy to actually get um, the, uh, to try to get the cure, the antidote for that. And so like actually he knew that his public image would have been better if he wanted to at least show that he wanted to save people. Exactly. Whereas this president, it, oh, mm. so she just downplays it. The only smart thing she does is go, you cannot tell people they're going to 100% die because that's true. You can't induce mass panic. Stop it's it now. Uh, please shut the fuck up. I'm ranting. It's being recorded. <laughs> it's being recorded. My rant is being recorded. Um, what does she do next? Oh, after her approval rates go down due to a scandal. Hey, uh, thanks, Britt. That's yeah. Uh, <laughs> Britt threw his mic inside a tornado. Now we're hearing it. Just remove him till I top my man. Is Sorry, fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so she recruits them once her approval rates go down. Now the comic could bring them back up, apparently. But okay. Uh, that's you because watch this movie. Huh? Keep going. Uh, so she, her approval rates go down. She brings them in to bring them back up, and this is all because of a scandal she had with this porn star who's in a very powerful position and still is in the powerful position, but yet somehow, like Democrats, this is a broken. They're not this broken, but whatever. Um, what happens next? Oh, so your mic so is echoing a bit. Shit. So they do the mission, um, which is they they deploy the nukes, and then the super rich Amazon Jeff Bezos guy walks in, and he's like, "Nah, bitch, you ain't doing this shit." <laughs> so they abort the mission. They have a meeting with one of the physicists, and she's like, "What we're gonna do instead? Because it has this really rich material." We're going to make him into 30 small asteroids, and this is going to work completely fine. <laughs> it's not. That's not how it works, but, you know. Of course. And somehow, during all this process, and bear in mind that it is confirmed that other countries are investigating this, and scientists are literally being fired and publishing papers going against the government's approach, the president isn't removed from power for a day during the people. <laughs> Which would happen, like, Trump got impeached for a day during the people, despite corruption. So there is still a system, but whatever. Uh, but then she lives uh, by the end, because they go out in a pod. They have this sudden pod this entire time, whatever. Um, <laughs> and they land on this alien planet, and they're all old, and they're all naked. And she gets eaten alive and is dead, and I'm like, oh, okay. Kate Blanchett is awful in this film. Oh, really? If she's the president, she's awful. I absolutely... No. Is she the president? She might be. But if she is, she's awful in this film. Well, Jim. So, I'm I, I'm I, think we, I think... Dumb. Yeah, but I think we should get into um, old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just want to say good, real good quick. Because, um, you know... The the guy who wrote Don't Look Up. Uh, do you know what other film he's written? Old. What what other film he's written? <laughs> like he's he's written a few films actually. Uh, um, The Big Short, which I think is you know a pretty good film. I enjoyed that one. Vice, which I've heard some that, good that things about. Really 
Um, he also wrote Lucy. Um, <laughs> no, he wrote Ant Man. Uh, one Jeb, you know our favorite film. So oh, didn't he also write the um, uh, the Anchorman movies? Um, I don't think so. Stop giving him science. Oh yeah, movies, he did please. actually. Anchorman Chu, the legend continues. He wrote the. We watched those together, Marcus, didn't we? Did we watch no. the second one? No. Oh, we shouldn't. It is really good. Yeah, we watched the first one, yeah. That film just, was stop good. Give, just stop giving him science movies. It needs to stop. I mean, yeah. Well, didn't he rebrand himself as, like, a political commentator not too long ago, and that's why he's been trying to get involved with all these films? Oh, is well, it? he could fuck oh, off. to be fair, he, he has written for <laughs> SNL, too, so I can understand how you know, that would go for him. Like... I'm sorry, there, there comes a point where I don't want you anywhere near it because you're worsening things. Mm-hmm. Alright, let's like, watch old. 